What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Bonnie and this is my channel where I talk about all things lifestyle and DIY. So if you're interested in either of those, make sure you hit subscribe and turn on those notifications. Today, I'm finally going to share with you guys my DIY dining table that I finished a couple of weeks ago. So although lumber prices are a little bit more expensive these days, I figured that it was still worth it to build my own dining table versus buying it somewhere online or in a store. So, and there's also the pride factor of it, but I will make sure to list my lumber list as well as my cut list down below in the description for you guys. And as always, if you have any questions about how I did it or what I did, make sure you leave them down below in the comments. So let's go ahead and get right to it. All right guys, the first thing that I started with was the tabletop. So I took four pieces of my two by 10 boards and I cut them to 68 and a half inches. So this is actually footage of me sending the breadboards through the planer, which is going to happen later in this video, but my camera had died when I was sending the tabletop through, so this is what you guys get. Now if you guys don't have a planer, that's totally fine. I just did it this way so that I do not have to sand the tabletop as much. After I sent all of the tabletop pieces through the planer, I went ahead and added pocket holes. I have about 10 pocket holes on each piece except for the last one, which is only going to be attached by the inner piece if that makes sense. So as you can see here, three boards out of the four have pocket holes and then the one on the very top does not. Now I'm just going to add some wood glue and then attach these with the pocket hole screws. Clamps are literally my best friend when I don't have a helping hand. Now I'm just taking my circular saw and making sure that the ends of both sides of the table are flush so that I can add the breadboards. And this is what it looks like when all of the pieces are attached. And now I'm just measuring each end to make sure that I cut the breadboard to the perfect length. So for the breadboards, you're going to cut to fit. That means that you're just going to cut your breadboards according to the width of your table. And now I'm gonna go ahead and set my breadboards through the planer. I'm also going to be shaving down the sides with my table saw just so that I have a nice clean finish on both sides so that one side can adhere to the tabletop well and then the other side that will be showing is nice and clean. Now I'm adding pocket holes so that I can go ahead and attach this to the tabletop. Before attaching it to the tabletop, I add some wood glue and then I use my handy dandy clamps to help me out.
As you guys can see, I had a couple of problems getting this to be flush with the tabletop, so I had to rework my screws several times, but with the help of the screws and replacement of them, as well as the clamps, I was able to get it right. So this is how the table looks from the bottom side. As you guys can see, I did not run the bottom through the planer. It is very rough looking and I'm okay with that because this is just gonna be in my house. Now I'm moving on to the legs. So I turned my miter saw to a 10 degree bevel and I cut out four legs that have a parallel cut at 28 and a half inches long. So this is what the four legs look like once they're all cut. You can see that both ends are going to be parallel to each other. Now I'm cutting two 2x4s at the same length, which is 65 inches, and these are going to be the supports that run across the tabletop on the bottom. And then I turned my miter saw to a bevel of 10 degrees once again, and I'm cutting the supports that are going to go on the top part of the legs, and these ends are gonna be not parallel to each other, and they're going to be 20 and a half inches long. Now I'm cutting the support pieces at the bottom of the legs and these are gonna be a four by four and the ends are also going to be not parallel to each other at 28 and a quarter inches long. So this is what the legs are going to look like. Now that I have all of the leg pieces and support pieces cut, I'm going to send them all through the planer. Just look how much nicer these pieces look after going through the planer. The edges are really clean looking and this table is going to turn out amazing. Now it's time for more pocket holes. So for the 4x4 leg support pieces, I don't have a jig big enough to make pocket holes in a 4x4. So what I did was I took my Craig jig guide for pocket holes and I measured one and a half inches up from the bottom of the 4x4 and I secured it with a clamp and then just screwed in pocket holes that way and it worked out perfect. So now I'm going to assemble the legs. So the top two by four piece is going to be connected to both of the legs. So I started off by making sure that the front piece of the four by four is flush with the front piece of the leg. So what this does is it mocks a four by four post without having to spend the extra money on it. For the bottom leg support piece, I measured three inches up from the bottom on both sides of the legs and that's where I attached the 4x4. and you repeat that process for the second set of legs.
and this is what the legs look like after you have them both assembled. Now I'm going to be adding the support pieces on the side, which is going to be your 2x4s. So these 2x4s are going to be straight up and down, they will not angle along with the legs. and repeat the same process on the other side. So I flipped the table over so that I could attach the bottom 4x4 support beam. I measured halfway between the legs and halfway between the beam and marked both ends so that I knew where the center was. I then lined up both lines on the support beam with the leg support and then secured it. And this is what the base of the table looks like when it's all put together. I placed the tabletop on top of the base and then I sealed in all of the cracks with wood filler. Now I'm taking sandpaper to the tabletop just to make sure that I have a smooth finish. So for the stain, I started off with a whitewash that has a tint of provincial in it. After one section is done, I go over the whitewash with early American and then I wipe it off. And I repeat this process for the entire table. After the stain had dried for 24 hours, I went ahead and I used my paint sprayer to give it about five coats of polyurethane. And I use polyurethane water-based in a satin finish. Seriously guys, having a paint sprayer for this process is makes it so much easier and I'm so glad that I have one. And this is what it looks like after I had just sprayed the last coat. And this is what my sad dining table looked like before I finished my build. These are the little brackets that I use to secure the tabletop to the base. And this is what my dining table looks like now. 
I'm super proud of this table. It's not perfect by any means, but I am absolutely in love with the design and the simplicity of it. I love the 4x4 beams and the legs for it, and I just think that it's a perfect color as well. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button, and I will see you guys in the next one.